Hello, this is the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Thank you so much for tuning into this video in which we look at changes to the period of sine and cosine graphs. So it turns out this number in front of x determines what the period will be. So remember the number in front of sine x or in front of cos x was the amplitude. This time the number adjacent to x determines the period. So remember from a previous video that the period is the length of a cycle of a sine or cosine graph. Another way to look at the period is the distance between peaks or trough, the distance between two maximum points or minimum troughs. So for sine and cosine, the normal period, so of y equals sine x and y equals cos x, the period is 360 degrees. That's how long a cycle takes. So for cos, you start at 1, and then it goes down to 0, then down to minus 1 at 180, up at 270 to the axis, and then at 360, it goes back to 1. The distance between the first peak and the second peak is 360 degrees. And that is the same for the sine graph. Its first peak is at 90, its next peak is at 450 degrees. Now, it turns out if we change this number in front of x, that will change the period. So the period is 360 divided by this number in front of x divided by b or 2 pi divided by b. Obviously, this is the period when we're dealing with degrees and this is the period when x is in radians. So let's look at an example. We'll now graph a change to the period. So we're now going to graph y equals sine of 2x. Now we know how to graph y equals sine of x. So what's different about this graph here? Well, this 2 in front of x, it basically makes everything happen twice as quickly. So we know for sine, it starts at 0, goes up, down, and then up like that. What is going to happen is everything's going to happen twice as quickly. So, sine still starts at the mean position, so if you haven't moved it up or down, it's the origin. So, the first peak of sine is normally at 90 degrees, but because things are happening twice as quickly, it's actually going to be halfway through, it's going to happen at 45 degrees. And then it normally returns to the axis at 180 degrees, but because everything's happening twice as fast, it's going to be at 90 degrees. Now, of course, while you're graphing this, if you're stuck, you can just substitute any of these values into the equation. So, for example, if I substitute x is 180, sine of 2 times 180, which is sine of 360, is 0. So between that, it's going to go down and hit its trough, its low point down here. So what's actually happening is sine is going to complete one full cycle, not in 360 degrees as it normally does, but in 180 degrees. So if I rub this out, sine is actually going to complete two cycles within 360 degrees. So the period is 360 divided by 2, which is 180. So the first peak was at x equals 45 degrees. The next peak will be over here at x equals 225 degrees. So it'll end up being like this. Sine will complete two cycles within 360 degrees. So this is the first cycle that it completes. And then you can see it's sort of like starting again here. Then the second cycle it completes is here. So it completes two cycles within 360 degrees. And if I were to keep going, the same thing would happen. It would complete another two cycles before 720 degrees. So we've got a cycle here and then another cycle here. Okay, so note here, sine of 2x still lives between minus 1 and 1. We haven't changed the amplitude. It's still 1. We also haven't changed the mean position, so we haven't shifted it up or down. So that is the graph of y equals sine, x, uh, sine 2x. Sorry. Now let's look at an example involving the cosine graph. 
So we will now graph y equals cos of x over 2 plus 1. So because there's no number out the front here in front of cos of x on 2, that means the amplitude is again 1. But remember, this number here, the plus 1, means we're changing its mean position. We're shifting it up 1. So the mean position is going to be along here at y equals 1. So let's now go ahead and graph this. So the first transformation shifted it up, the other transformation is a change to the period. So hopefully you all see that x over 2 is the same as a half times x. Dividing by 2 times by a half are the same things. So that means the period here is going to be 360 divided by the number in front of x. 360 divided by a half, which is 720. What this means is... You know, cos normally starts here, and then it goes down and stuff. It completes a cycle in 360 degrees. This half means it's only going to complete half a cycle in 360 degrees. It's going to take until 720 degrees to get a full cycle. So, to go ahead and graph this, we know that cos starts at its maximum. So the maximum here will be 2. The amplitude's 1, so the maximum is going to be 1 up from the mean position. So what normally happens with cos, it normally hits 90 degrees, it goes down, right? It goes down by 1. But because of this x on 2, everything is happening, happening half as quickly or twice as slowly. So instead of coming down at 90 degrees, it's actually going to take until 180 degrees to come down. So that's because if I substitute 180 for x, I get cos of 180 over 2. I get cos of 90 plus 1. Cos of 90 is 0. Cos of 90 plus 1 is 1. And then normally what happens is that cos reaches its minimum at 180 degrees. But because everything's going twice as slow, it's not going to reach its minimum until 360 degrees. If I substitute cos of 360 over 2, cos of 180 plus 1 equals 0. You can just put that in your calculator. Normally, cos reaches its maximum again at 360 degrees. But because everything's happening twice as slowly... This isn't going to happen at 360. It's not going to reach its maximum at 360. It's going to have to wait until 720. So its maximum is not going to be reached again until up here. Now let's join up these points. So note in this example, I use four points, but you can use as many points as you want by substituting any value you like into the equation. So this one in blue is y equals cos of x over 2 plus 1. It takes 720 degrees for a full cycle rather than the normal 360. All right, thank you so much for tuning into this video. This has been the luckiest maths teacher in the world. Have a great day.